So I'm still moving my comic book collection. And today I'm gonna to show you how to choose the right box to move your comic books in. What's up guys, BJ Kicks here. I buy comics, I read them, and I review them all for your viewing pleasure. So if you're new here, welcome. And if you're not, welcome back. Now on this channel, I do comic book reviews, hauls, unboxings, and even tutorial videos like this one. So if you're interested in that type of content, you should hit the subscribe button and then make sure you hit that bell icon so that YouTube actually tells you when my videos go live. Now you're tuned in to the second episode of Moving My Collection. That's right. I am taking my entire collection of hundreds of, well, not hundreds. I might have a hundred hardcovers uh, and then nearly 2000 single issue comic books. We're taking all of that, boxing it up, and I'm going to be moving into a new home. Well, I'm super excited about this new man cave, bat cave, whatever we're going to call it. I'm excited to get new shelves and do all that stuff. But before we do all that, I have to do the hard work of packing up these books, keeping them organized, and moving them safely to their destination with no damage. And a huge part of that is making sure that I choose the right boxes for each book and each different size of books. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm actually going to show you kind of behind the scenes of my moving station and how I've got things set up. But before we do that, I got to give a quick shout out to the, today's sponsor. Uh, this video is sponsored by Ultimate Comics Raleigh. Now, you guys know I shop at Ultimate Comics Raleigh. I think they are the best comic shop in the world. They've got a super clean, well-organized store. They've got great customer service. Dan Casey and Trevor are the best. If you ever need recommendations on what comics to buy, they're the ones to ask, um, and they are all like walking encyclopedias. Uh, so that's really dope. And if that wasn't enough, Ultimate Comics gets really, really great retailer exclusive covers like this one. This one is for Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters, the alpha issue uh, featuring Boba Fett, painted by the amazingly talented Tommy Lee Edwards. Um, and like I said, this cover is amazing. So you can actually get the trade dress version of this cover for just $19.80, or if you want to get the set, which is actually limited to a thousand sets, um, then you can do that for $59.99. And all you got to do is call the store to set it up, and you can even start a pull list while you're at it. So if you don't have a local comic shop in your area, Ultimate will service you through mail order. And like I said, all you got to do is give them a call. The number is in the description of this video. And make sure you tell them BJ Kicks sent you, and they might even pack some extra goodies in your order. So that's it. So that's why I wanted to give them a shout out. Shout out to Ultimate Comics Raleigh, and thank you guys for sponsoring this video. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and go behind the scenes of my moving station while I decide which types of boxes are going to get packed with which types of books. We're moving the collection, so there's a few goals that we have. The first goal is to get every book from point A to point B in excellent condition. We don't want any scratches, bumps, nicks, dings. We don't want any damages to occur while moving. And chances are, if uh, comic book distributors like Diamond can ship books and they have a bunch of damages, we're probably at risk for damages too. So we're going to talk about some precautions that we're going to take to make sure that we don't have the same fate as local comic shop owners do every Tuesday night. Now. Um, I've got several types of books here. Um, now, like I said, so my bad, let me back up. So last time around, I put a bunch of trade paperbacks in a diamond box. And that was easy because trade paperbacks are kind of what diamond boxes are designed for. Single issues, trades, same size. But when we start adding other things to the mix, when we start talking about hardcovers, standard size or oversized and then don't get me started on art books now we need different size boxes to do the job so i've got a few different types of books here but i've also got a few different types of boxes so we're going to just try them out we're going to do some trial and error and see what works best and what the pros and cons of each method will be so let's uh let's switch up the camera view so we can get started all right guys so i figured i'd just talk to you guys face to face I'm joking. There's no face here. Just my hands. Um, well, we got a few different things going on here. We got some. Uh, well, first off, I got some hardcovers. I've got standard size hardcovers over here. I got. Well, you'll see. You can see these. I got standard size hardcovers. But then just off 
little screen off frame. I've got some deluxe hardcovers as well, oversized, right? And we got to figure out what the best way to pack all these books are. So I'm going to try a few different methods. The first of which is going to be this comic book short box. Now, I actually bought these in a pack of 10 from my local comic shop, Ultimate Comics Raleigh. Normally, you do buy them individually, but Dan was just good enough to keep them bundled and sell me all 10 at one time. So, very cool. But I've got this, you know, plain old BCW short box um, that you normally would, would use for storing single issues, but who knows? You could store standard size hardcovers, and even Omnibus might fit in here. Um, the other method I've got, this is just your normal box that you would get from in-stock trades. Um, the best part about these boxes would be the wealth of packing material that comes inside. Um, and then, as you can see on this wall behind me, I got a bunch of diamond boxes. So I've got all these types of boxes. Now, what I want to do is do some trial and error, and ultimately we're going to decide what the best method of transporting these books is going to be. Because we got some goals. We want the books to arrive safely, right? We want them to arrive in excellent condition. We also want to stay organized. We want to know exactly what's in every box. And obviously, we're going to have some people helping. We don't want the boxes to be so heavy that people can't carry them safely. So we got a few things to consider when we're putting these boxes together. So let's just start off with the short box. I'm going to start this way because I assume that's the method that's not going to work for us. All right, so your standard BCW short box, this would hold about 150, um, yeah, 150 single issue comic books. What's great about these short boxes is you can fit plenty of stuff in them, right? And they've got these nice handles on the sides. So they're kind of ideal for moving. They're like banker's boxes for comics. And what I love about them is that you can fit your books, right? So I've got just to go in here, I got my Eagle Moss collection that I've been building up through Zobby Mystery Boxes. So let's start right here with volume 13 is the is the shortest or smallest volume number I have. So I can keep my books in order while putting them in this short box, right? So we got 13 through 34, and then I got some others here too. So let's put all these in here. And I could probably fit even more, right? Now, what I love about this, like I said, I don't even have a bunch of packing or any packing material in here. It's a pretty snug fit. There's some room on either side. So the books could bounce around, but we've got these nice handles on the side. So I'm going to turn this and pick it up. Not terrible, but it's definitely pretty heavy, right? Now, there's some problems. Because if I add books, if I add any more books to this box, it's obviously going to get heavier. Um, and if I don't add books to this box, there's a lot of room for things to flop around. And then we start talking about damages. So I haven't exactly ruled this method out because there are things that I can do. We can put bubble wrap on either side of the books just to fill up the rest of that empty space. And let's maybe try that. Perks of having a daughter, I got these little safety scissors. So let's go ahead and cut this bubble wrap, the unusable part that's been popped already. I'm going to fold this up, put this right here. That's a nice fit. And then I'll put the other side right here. So there we go. A lot less room for the books to bounce around. We got some nice cushion for whoever's hands may be here. And 
yeah, we can carry these pretty well. Um, I might even put a few more books in here. But, okay. I'm not mad at this setup. Now, as far as keeping it organized, I could write directly on this box. Or, what I'll likely do is grab some labels and label them later on. So, let's move these over. We packed up half of our DC Eagle Moss collection, and that's, that's exciting. Now, the next method that, well, that's great for standard size hardcovers, right? Because they're the same size as a normal comic book, you know, and we can get away with that. Now, let's see what we're going to do in the case of an oversized hardcover or an omnibus. Okay, so that worked, like, surprisingly well for the standard size hardcovers. And I actually think I'm not even going to audition any other method. I think I'm going to carry my standard size hardcovers in these uh, BCW short boxes. The only problem is that the standard size hardcovers are not even a third of my collection. My collection is almost exclusively oversized hardcovers and omnibus. So if you guys missed my comic book trim size video, these are deluxe editions, right? A deluxe edition is the same height as an omnibus, but an omnibus is a lot thicker. But they're like bigger than your standard sized hardcover. So I want to see how that fits in these short boxes and see if that's, that's going to be as good of a fit as the others. So as you can see, they definitely fit in here. This is my Batman by Tom King, which is this. Volume 1 and Volume 5. So let's put these in order. Uh, volume 2. Because again, I want to stay organized, right? So Volume 2 goes all the way through Issue 32. In the middle of Volume 2, the button happens, which is a Batman and Flash crossover. Um, and then we got Volume 3. Volume 4 and Volume 5. Now, I also have this Batman Year 1 because it kind of came around the same time. Now, that's cool. Now, I've also got this Wonder Woman Omnibus by Gail Simone, which came around the same time. Now, let's see what else I could fit in this box. All right, so I've got another Omnibus. This is a thick boy. This is the Green Lantern by Jeff Johns, Volume 1. And here we are, right? Now, there's a couple of things here. First, all these books have dust jackets. That's something we didn't have to worry about before. But with dust jackets, you know, they can get damaged in transit. They're, I mean, they're just pieces of paper. So we're probably going to want to wrap these books somehow so that they don't get damaged. And then the question is, are we going to wrap them individually? in bubble wrap, how's that going to work? But also, something else to think about. Bigger books, more hardcover means these books are going to be heavier. This, with less uh, books in it, is actually about the same as this short box was with the standard size hardcovers. I could probably fit one to two more omnibus in here, straight out, but I would probably want to do the same thing where I put less books in the box and I put some packing material just to fill up that space so that it's not going crazy, right? So that's one way of doing these. But again, the issue is that, you know, lifting one of these is just fine. No one's going to bat an eye. But I've got a collection of over 300 books, right? So if we've got all these books that need to be moved, somebody's going to get tired after two or three of these boxes. So let's try out some other methods of packing up books that maybe won't be as daunting or strenuous for us. All right, guys. So what I've done is I've actually went and just grabbed a box that I had already packed up, um, but I hadn't taped shut. Um, but this is a diamond box. So you saw this in the last installment of this series, um, how to pack up trade paperbacks. And it was great because diamond boxes are like the same size as a standard comic book. So... You know, you should be able to just fit two rows of trade paperbacks side by side. But you can't do that with an omnibus because an omnibus is an irregular size. So if I put it in here like this, it doesn't fit in the box and it's kind of tilted. 
Um, so if I put it in the middle of the box, you know, I can't like put more than one layer. And I've got, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a bunch of extra space around this box. So with the Omnibus, then if I'm gonna use a diamond box, which I'm probably not, because it seems like a waste of space. With an Omnibus, if I'm gonna use a diamond box, then it's imperative that I use a bunch of bubble wrap. But the problem with Omnibus is you can only fit so many in a box, right? So I've got, you know, I guess a few books, a few Omnibus and oversized hardcovers, and that's it, right? So it's gonna take a lot of these diamond boxes to get my collection moved. And I gotta use a lot of bubble wrap to do it. But the advantage is this is a much lighter box than either of those two short boxes. So maybe it's worth that hassle. We'll come back to this. All right, now one last option that we have for packing up these hardcovers is in stock trades boxes, right? So these are shipping boxes that if you order a lot of Omnibus, you probably have a lot of these on hand. So if you know you're gonna move, then it's probably prudent to just go ahead and start saving those boxes um, as early as you can. Now, looking at the IST box, it's pretty similar in size to the diamond box. It's actually slightly larger. The only thing that makes the IST box or in stock trades or whatever company you order your box from, what makes it appealing is that they've got these shipping materials in them, this foam, these foam inserts. So theoretically, you could just buy the foam inserts yourself and pack your books in whatever box you want to. But let's try this out and see how this goes. So I'm just gonna place my Green Lantern Omnibus in the box, just like this, with the shipping materials on either side of it, right? So this is great. It doesn't move around like it was doing in the diamond box. But of course, if you're gonna put all these books in with all this shipping material, that means you're basically packing one book at a time. And you just that's just not an efficient use of space. All right, so pros and cons of each method. We've got the BCW boxes. Now, what you'll notice is that the books are slightly taller than the box. So that means what's gonna happen is the lid of your box is going to rub against your books. If that's a deal breaker for you, just be aware that your oversized hardcovers, they're gonna, you're gonna wanna protect the tops of these somehow. Um, but they work great for the standard size hardcovers, right? Um, but the cons to the BCW is that because they hold so much, they get heavy. So the best way to use them is going to be to put some packing material in between so the, the boxes stay light. But these are very sturdy and they're pretty inexpensive as well. The next option is diamond boxes. Now, diamond boxes, they have a lot going for them because you can typically get them free as leftovers from your comic shop. I had to pay for the BCW boxes. But the cons with standard hardcovers and with oversized hardcovers, you can't fit them in any sort of neat way. So you're gonna end up with a bunch of extra space and you're gonna have to find something to stuff those boxes with. But one of the pros is this is really light and compact, even with a bunch of boxes filling it, or a bunch of books filling it. So that's probably the if we're ranking these, I'm probably going to go with this number one, this number two. And the last method would be using a box from previous shipping destinations, right? So using your in-stock trades, your true graphic novels, your organic price books box. That's cool, but you can really only fit one book at a time in these boxes. So that's just not an efficient use of time, money, resources or space so i think we've decided i think we have decided that the best way to move our collection is going to be these white bcw storage boxes i love that you can write right on the top of them so you can see clearly what's what and i'm glad i bought 10 of them i don't think 10 is going to be enough they're going to go have to buy another bundle but this is definitely how my collection is going to be moved so that's great. We've decided which boxes we're going to use to move the collection. Now, in the next video, we'll talk about how we stay organized during the move. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you saw something you liked. 
hope you got some some ideas as far as shipping things out. Um, what I'll do is I'll do another video about staying organized, but I'll also show you the final product of how I decided to pack up these books before we get on the road. But I um, hope you saw something you liked in this video. hope this was helpful. If you are moving your collection, I want to know how it's being done. What boxes did you use? Did you use BCW boxes? Was there some other method that you found that was better? And were your books damaged when you got to your destination? That's what I want to know. So if you got that information, leave it in the comments below. If you want to talk comments with us all the time, join the K-Squad. Um, shout out to our channel sponsors. Uh, they are all in the description below. Zavi, Organic Price Books, and Mainstream Comics. Uh, they're really dope, really dope companies, and I'm super glad to have them as channel partners. So check them out. There's always deals that to be had in the comp in the description of these videos. So check them out, and I'll see you in another video soon. Until then, I hope you saw something you liked. And if not, hey, that's cool. You can always buy what you like. Make sure you read what you buy, and be nice to others, because kindness makes the world go round. Peace.